Welcome to an afternoon in the Upstate with the Roman Catholic Diocese of Charleston. Your co-hosts for this evening are Lily Golden and Ted Fayton. Glory, glory to the newborn King. Hello everyone, my name is Lily Golden. And I'm Ted Fayton. Merry Christmas. Welcome to St. Anthony of Padua Catholic Church in the West End of downtown Greenville, South Carolina. We have a wonderful Christmas celebration in store for you today. Our show includes singing, storytelling, and a Christmas message from Bishop Robert E. Guglielmoni, Bishop of Charleston. Father J. Scott Newman will also join us and give us his insight on this most holy day. Our cooking segment, Sister Act Two in the Kitchen, with Sister Pamela Smith and Sister Roberta Fulton, will provide you with two delicious recipes. They're easy to make, very little cleanup, <laughs> and it's sure to feed a lot of people. In addition to all of that, Catholic Charities will share with us what they are doing to assist those in need in our area. This is a wonderful opportunity for you to see Catholics in action. First on the show is our traditional Christmas message from the Most Reverend Robert E. Guglielmone, Bishop of Charleston. The Holy Father, Pope Benedict XVI, appointed Bishop Guglielmone as spiritual leader of the Diocese of Charleston in 2009. The Roman Catholic Diocese of Charleston is comprised of the entire state of South Carolina, in which there are 94 Catholic parishes, 20 missions, 35 Catholic schools, two Catholic hospitals, an assisted living facility, and 11 Catholic charity centers across the state. And now we take you to Charleston for the Bishop's message. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the beautiful and familiar Christmas scene of Mary and Joseph kneeling around a baby in a manger produces a special longing in us for the peace and harmony that the scene in Bethlehem creates. How we long for that peace. However, in our world today, that peace is so difficult to find. Instead, we view a world of war, of corruption, of terror, of scandals, of abject poverty. However, if we claim to be disciples of the one born in a stable who grow into the man we call the Messiah, to whom shall we go? We can go nowhere, and to no one except to Bethlehem, and the one who alone can give us the peace the world cannot give. We can and should do more than simply give in to the evil so much of our human society embraces. We can add our love and our commitment for change to the horrors of violence, distrust, abuse, neglect, and human manipulation. We can in many ways help to create a better world, a world where all human life is respected from womb to tomb and where we respect the wonderful gifts of our environment given to us by God. This season ideally should inspire us to go out of ourselves and to put on hold the temptations to despair that we face every day. Through this inspiration, let us resolve as we prepare to celebrate a new year that we will see it as a time of grace, a time of opportunity to do all we can to further progress toward the realization of the kingdom of God in our midst. We are able to affect change. We can make a difference. May the celebration of Christmas this year energize us and animate us to do our part to overcome the evils of our current society. May the blessings of the Christ child be yours in abundance this Christmas and throughout 2019. In the Lord's peace, God's blessings upon you all. Thank you, Bishop Guglielmone, for your humble message. We ask for your continued prayers for our bishop and all of our church leaders. Pope Francis refers to prayers as hope in action. He points out that time in prayer is never wasted. May we all continue to pray for love, peace, and unity in all that we do. Yes, hope in action indeed. That is what we must instill in our children so that they are committed to serving others throughout their lives. Speaking of children, I think I hear a few rascals coming yes. right now. That's because the St. Anthony of Padua Catholic School Mixed Choir is up next. They are right on time. The choir will be singing Christmas Time is Here by Vince Guaraldi. The choir director is Mr. Larry McCullough.
Uh, what an amazing job by the choir. Father Newman, did you enjoy that? It was splendid. It splendid, was Ted, thank you. absolutely awesome. Uh, joining us now is the very Reverend J. Scott Newman, pastor of St. Mary's Catholic Church, which is located in downtown Greenville. Uh, Father Newman, welcome. It's a joy to be here. I just have to ask you the first question. Father Newman, how does the, the birth of Jesus change our human nature? To answer that, we have to ask what the human nature was in the beginning and how it may have changed before Christ came. Let me turn to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. We read, Then God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And at verse 27, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. Meaning human nature made by God was for us to share his own divine glory. And it was that which was lost in the original sin, the rebellion of Adam and Eve against the Father's eternal plan for our lives. And that rebellion was the result of a temptation provided by the ancient enemy, personified in, in the mythopoetic language of Genesis as a serpent mm -hmm. who whispers into the ears of Adam and Eve that if they will only choose what they want rather than follow God's design, they will be like gods. But of course it's a lie and it leads to man's fall from grace and it places in our nature a wound, the mystery of lawlessness, which is why we need a savior in the first place. And then finally comes the beautiful gift of the eternal word made flesh. On Christmas day, the church has not one, not two, not three, but four different sets of texts of prayers and scripture readings for the celebration of Christmas because the mystery is inexhaustibly complex. Mm -hmm. The fourth of those masses is on Christmas Day and this is the opening prayer. O God who wonderfully created the dignity of human nature, meaning the beginning, Genesis, and still more wonderfully restored it, meaning after the resurrection of Christ from the dead, grant we pray that we may share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Mm -hmm. The prayer means God became a man so that we could once again share the divine glory. And that is the gift that Christ gives us. All we gave him in return was the ability to suffer and die. He gives us our restored nature, which is why Christ says in the book of Revelation, Behold, I make all things new, restoring to us the original gift of divine glory. That's, that's just amazing on this Christmas day for everybody to kind of just stop and remember that uh, Father Newman, Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed that. We now take you to the cook station in downtown Greenville for some down home cooking and good eating with Sister Act Two in the kitchen. Welcome to Sister Act Two in the kitchen with Sister Roberta Fulton and Sister Pamela Smith. Christmas greetings, everyone. I'm Sister Pamela Smith. And I'm Sister Roberta Fulton. Welcome to our cooking segment. Sister, Sister Act, Act Two in, in the, the kitchen. kitchen. We're in our kitchen away from home. It's the cook station. The cook station could be found nestled in Greenville's historic West End. It's a locally owned retail shop offering that something special for the foodie and everyone. We appreciate the honor of being able to film our Christmas cooking segment right here. Sister Pam and I have two delicious recipes that we want to share with you today. They are one pot type dishes that will feed a lot of people and because it involves only one pot, there is very little cleanup. It's hard to beat the convenience of one pot dinners. Not only do they make for easy assembly, but the cleanup is also a breeze. Today, I will be preparing frogmo stew with a twist. My dish is a pasta that I call Johnny Mazette a la Christmas. Before we get started, I want you to meet our tasters. Our tasters are here to sample the dishes that we prepare and let you know if they're as good as we're proclaiming that they are. Tasters, please introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about you. Hi, my name is uh, Harold Evangelista and uh, I'm a parishioner of uh, St. Mary Magdalene in Simpsonville. And I represent the Filipino community as well as the Couples for Christ here in the upstate. And I would like to greet everyone a uh, happy Merry Christmas and in our native language, Maligayang Pasko sa inyong lahat, and I'm very thrilled to be here. Great Thank to you. meet you, Harold. Hello, my name is Mary Ann Nguyen. I'm a prisoner of uh, Our Lady of Lavang in Greenville, South Carolina. 
I wish you all a very blessed and happy holiday. Xin kính chúc mọi người một mùa Giáng sinh an lành, hạnh phúc và tràn đầy hồng ân Thiên Chúa. Thank you, Marianne. Marianne is the owner of JoJo's Seafood Market here in Greenville and has provided the fresh seafood I will use in the dish I will prepare. Thank you, Marianne. Tell us where you're located and what to expect when we visit. Jojo Seafood is a, a fresh market located on 2605 Wayhampton Boulevard in Greenville, South Carolina. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jenny Bowie. Uh, Merry Christmas. I'm currently a parishioner at Our Lady of La Vang, Vietnamese Catholic Church. Merry Christmas, and I would like to say it in Vietnamese also. Con chúc mọi người một mùa Giáng sinh an lành và hồng ân Chúa Hải Đồng. Thank you, Thank and we'll you. practice afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Mary Louise Worthy, and I am chief of the Lower Eastern Cherokee Nation, South Carolina. I am a parishioner, Our Lady of the Rosary Catholic Church, and I represent the Native American ministries in the Catholic Diocese. Thank you, Thank you, Mary. Frogmore stew is one of my family favorites. It's a traditional dish in the Low Country region of the state, and is sometimes called Low Country Boiled but I will always call it frogmore stew with a twist. Frogmore stew? I know about frog legs, but are you gonna be cooking with frogs, sister? <laughs> <laughs> no mercy, mercy, no, Sister Pam. The dish was called frogmore stew because of the town it originated in. There are no frogs in this stew, and it gets its name from a place that has only a post office and one side of the road and a two-story white country store on the other side. Frogmo was a community of St. Helena's Island just off the South Carolina coast. The town was named by John Grayson, an early owner who was said to have named Frogmore after his ancestral English country estate in England. Hmm, Frogmore, England. I know about the Frogmore in the Low Country, sister because it's near the outreach center that our sisters run down there. It's about a mile away. But we, uh, you know, Frogmore, England, isn't that Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, like some castle? I have no idea about members of the royal family's relocation. <laughs> However, <laughs> I do know that Frogmore stew was changed later to be called Low Country Boil. This happened after the post office did away with the Frogmore community address <laughs> and the name of the dish changed along with it. The dish I will prepare is my own version of what I call Frogmore stew with a twist. Well, it sounds yummy, Sister Roberta. Um, it'll be one of my favorites. Uh, like yours, my dish has a history behind it as well. Uh, with any major holidays, dis dishes traditionally eaten at Christmas are essential components of the holiday. One of them is eggnog, of course. What's some of the other things? Uh, Apple cider. Hot chocolate. Fruit cake. Oh, uh, chestnuts. chestnuts. And, of course, my favorite is Christmas ham. Oh, the big Christmas ham. Big, juicy, and enough left over for the next day. The dish I'm about to prepare answers the question of what do you do with all that leftover Christmas ham, mm. aside from making sandwiches. You make pasta, of course. That's what my mother did when I was growing up. In my house, we call the pasta dish I'm making Johnny Mazette. This was my mom's spin-off from a Johnny Marzetti, a Chicago chef and his family, Midwestern Italian-American pasta dish that originally consisted of egg noodles, cheese, ground beef, and tomato sauce with aromatic vegetables and mushrooms. My dish, Johnny Mazette a la Christmas, notice the New Yorkers dropped the R on his name, <laughs> and it's made with that leftover Christmas ham. Oh, I see. The original dish is called Johnny Marzette Tea. And when <laughs> you do your cooking thing, is it called Johnny Mazzetti? It's like traditional spaghetti. And when I make my version of it, it's going to be called spam -getty. <laughs> Oh, spam? Spam? <laughs> spam? Oh, no. Like spam eddy, spam -getty. Oh, no. Uh, you can't make it with Spam. Uh, just like hot, uh, frogmore, fruit, uh, frogmore stew, you don't put frogs in it. You don't put Spam in my recipe. Yeah. Okay, if you're thinking about substituting that, no way. 
Here are the ingredients for my Johnny Mazette a la Christmas. It'll serve six people. If you want to serve more people, then just do the math with the ingredients. It doesn't require an electric roaster or a crock pot like many of the recipes, just a good sized pot with a cover. Here you see. Now you'll notice that this emphasizes Christmas colors in the ingredients. And here we go. Already cooked and drained, 14 to 16 ounces of spinach noodles or spinach farfalletti or spinach fettuccine. And then we've got two cups or more of your diced ham, previously boiled or baked or smoked. Then 32 ounces of juicy diced tomatoes, a quarter a cup of diced green pepper. You do a lot of chopping here. <laughs> Half a cup of diced orange bell pepper, and then six ounces of, or more of V8, just to make sure that it stays a little juicy, and one to two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, more if you're like me and you like a lot of it. And then you put in some sprinkles of black pepper and minced onion. Just sprinkle it on in, stir it all up. The recipe can be found on our website, sccatholic.org slash recipes. And I'm going to just pour all this Can't. in now Can't and get it cooking. Taste some of that. Mm. Wow, and the colors are so Christmassy. Then you know, when I do it at home, I don't measure anything. We just, <laughs> get, we just gave you a recipe for those of you who aren't experimental. <laughs> okay. Oh boy, that looks good. Wow, smelling already. Now we've got to let this simmer a bit and cover it all up. And it's time for Sister Roberta's Frogmore stew with a twist. Thank you, Sister Pam. That smells yummy. Now for my Frogmore stew with a twist, first you start off with a big pot. The more the people, the bigger the pot. This recipe is for a party of eight. Here are the ingredients. Six quarts of water, three-fourths cup of Old Bay spice, two medium onions, two pounds of new fresh potatoes. Thank you, Sister Pam. You're welcome. We're gonna have to get this in here and get all of this in this one pot dish. Two pounds of smoked sausage. You can use the Andula links if you wish, and you cut it into half inch slices. The more, the better, the taste with that. So we're gonna put the Sausage in. Sister Pam, help me. Put that sausage sure. right in the pot. Be this happy. is a one pot dish. Okay. This is our sausage going. Whoop. One of us got away. One got away. <laughs> one uh -oh. got away. All right. <laughs> and we're going to use six ears of corn. We can do this together. Come mm -hmm. on, we can get all these ears of corn right in here. And, and get... we washed our hands. And we did. <laughs> <laughs> They're nice and clean. Ooh, that is starting to really Boil look up. and smell great already. Already, okay. okay. Uh, and we're shrimp. going to do our deveined shrimp. Marianne, is that correct? Yes. Right. We're going to use deveined shrimp, not divine. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to put some crab claws in. Ooh. Wow. And I can already feel that this is going to be a wonderful dish. Uh, it is just so scrumptious, mouth-watering. And as we put the crab legs in, you can also use crab claws if you wish. And I'm going to put these in, if I can get them, and hope they don't turn to frogs. <laughs> <laughs> they may leap out of the pot. It's so good. <laughs> yes, it is so good and tasty. Okay. And that's why it's a bit messy, but children love this dish because you know, the more messy, the better it is. And I'm going to garnish it with the orange slices after we get it ready for serving and the lemons. That's to give you that Christmas flavor, that Christmas feel. And of course you wanna put some butter on your potatoes when they come out. And this recipe can be found 
on our website at scatholic.org slash recipes. I present to you Johnny Mazette a la Christmas. And I present to you Frogmore Stew with a twist. You can always add a salad, some cornbread or biscuit to complement this wholesome meal. This is what I call good eating in the South. Now it's time to taste. Well, what's your about the uh, spinach noodles? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are. They're so good. Yeah, no. yeah. Look at that. Very yeah, tasty. Very yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Thank you for joining us at the cook's station today for Sister Act Two in, in the, the kitchen. kitchen. And Merry Christmas to everyone. God bless you. And now back to you, Ted and Lily. Ladies and gentlemen, here with me is Carl Rogozinski, correct? Yes. Carl Rogozinski, he's the coordinator for Catholic Charities Piedmont Office. Carl, welcome. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you, Carl. Uh, now, first and foremost, I've heard so many good things that the Catholic Charities of South Carolina is, is doing to promote self-sufficiency and, and break the cycle of poverty in South Carolina by serving those in need. That's very important. You're definitely Catholics in action, that we would say. Can you tell us about some of the programs, in particular, Catholic Charities' new initiative, Our Ladies Pantry? Yes, Our Ladies Pantry uh, is a very exciting initiative. We just opened it, in fact, October 2nd. Been open two months now. We've reached capacity for the two days that we're open of 240 households that we're serving. Mm -hmm. We're actually located in an area that has 3,200 households living below the federal poverty level. So we are right there helping the folks that need it the most. It is actually a different concept. It's a client choice pantry. Most pantries will give uh, folks food and they'll have the option whether they need it or not. With a client choice, they get to shop on their own. We have shopping buddies that go with them that walk through and actually we have nutritional uh, information and education. Wow. But the important thing of this pantry, different from other pantries, is the wraparound services. We have over 30 partners in the upstate that work with us to provide services that Catholic Charities can. So we have financial literacy classes, uh, financial empowerment classes, we have legal classes, everything. We, we have a classroom there that we can you know, open it up to a lot of folks for wraparound services. So that is the key part of this pantry. It's more than just food. It's an entry point and an access point to other services. I mean, what you guys are doing is nothing short of amazing. Carl, how can, how can folks find you and get involved? Well, they can find us on the um, sccatholic.org, our website, the diocesan website. And if they'll just go to the offices and look up Catholic Charities, and they go on our website, and they can donate there. They can also find out all the initiatives we're doing, not just in Greenville, but statewide. So yeah. if folks are seeing it anywhere in the state, they can certainly uh, contact their Catholic Charities office, volunteer, or donate to those offices. Hey, I love it. Carl, thank you so much. You're Merry Christmas welcome. to you. Yeah, Pleasure. thank you. Right. Lily, back to you. Folks, meet Father Michael O'Carey. Father Michael is the pastor of St. Martin de Porres Catholic Church and School in Columbia, South Carolina. Welcome, Father Michael. Thank you, Lilia. It's nice to be here. Thank you. As Christians, we are called to go into the peripheries or those on the margins of their communities in order to learn how to best serve the common good. What more can we do to better serve those suffering from social injustices, Father? First of all, we really need to know that uh, these social injustices are sins against our human equality. And um, we have to be practical in treating and eradicating these problems among all individuals, not just Christians alone. Um, since these sins affect uh, human uh, fairness and equality among human beings. We need to identify them, for instance, inequities of every kind, um, racism, segregation, chauvinism, sexism. Um, in one way or the other, these sins affect human beings. So Christians do not have to just identify, but we have to work hard to become justice itself. To, to disagree with every uh, areas of injustice, even when they are systemic or come through policies and um, in any form. Uh, we first of all have to 
they cry them, and then we have to let the people know, and then we will be part of changing every system that is unjust. Thank you for your insightful words, Father. Back to you, Ted. Our show would not be complete without a Christmas story. Now would be a great time to gather the kids, get them to put down the toys and bring them around the screen for our traditional Christmas story. Our storyteller is Franciscan friar, Father Patrick Tuttle, pastor of this beautiful church. The name of our story is If I Were a Goose. Enjoy. Once upon a time, there was a family that lived on a farm. And the family living on the farm experienced a difficult winter. It was such a difficult winter that the snow was not only falling like this, it was blowing, just blowing by, making big drifts. And it was Christmas Eve, and the mother of the family said to the father of the family, honey, we need to get ready to go to church. And he said, well, the storm is kind of rough out there. I think I might stay home and take care of the farm while you go to the church with the children. And she said, oh, honey, I really would like it if we could all be together as a family in church. He said, yes, yes, I know, but the storm is very bad, and I think I should keep the lights on and the heat on and the fire going because the storm is very bad. She said, okay. So she got the children all dressed up, and they went off to the church. Well, that father was sitting at home, tending the fire and trying to keep the home warm. And do you know he began to hear the strangest thing in the world? All of a sudden he heard And he wondered what that was. And he went to the door and he opened up the door and that snow was just blowing by like that. Just blowing and blowing. And he could barely see anything but he could hear something. Honk, 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 honk. It was geese. They were flying in the blizzard, but they were blind, they couldn't see, and they were actually hitting the side of the barn. And some of them were hitting and dying, and he was thinking, oh, this is awful. Christmas night and all these geese are flying into the barn. I must do something. And he went, got his clothes on, and he went out to the barn, he opened up the doors of the barn, and he turned the light on. And he thought, surely the geese will see the light, and they'll come in out of the storm. But you know, honk, honk, those geese didn't see the light. And they kept hitting the side of the barn. This is terrible, this is terrible. And he ran into the house and he got some of his wife's fresh baked bread. And he thought, this is great, they'll definitely smell this. And so he laid out the bread. He broke the bread and he laid it out in a line to the light. And when he broke the bread and laid it out, he was sure the geese would come and find the bread. But did they find that bread? Oh my gosh, they kept hitting the side of the barn. It was awful. He was thinking, this is terrible. Oh my gosh, when my wife and children come home, all these geese are going to be dying inside of the barn. This is awful. And he thought, oh my gosh, if only I could become a goose. Then I could honk and lead them to the bread and to the light. If only I could become a goose, I could lead them. Do you know that's exactly what God thought? when he said, if only I could become a man and lead them to the bread and to the light. Do you know of anybody who became a man like that? Did God become a man? Uh -huh. Who? Jesus. Yes. And that's the reason why we tell this story because just like the geese, we can be flopping around sometimes and we don't know what to do and life hurts and, and, and the blizzard is too rough. We can't really see well and we need the light and we need the bread and we need to be guided. And so God sent us his son in the middle of the darkness, in the middle of the cold to lead us to the light of his father's love. And when we follow, kind of like our head goose, Jesus, we're safe and with God forever. And the storm won't hurt us. What do you think of the story? Do you understand now why God would become a man? Yes. To help us, right? To lead us. Isn't that awesome? Well, I'm hoping that you can also help God by living a good life and leading people to God, because they're in a storm, really, just like that. But with your help and my help, we can bring them where they need to be, God working through us. Amen?
Yes, Jesus, you are the light of the world indeed. You are our hope in these challenging times. We place our faith in you as we celebrate your birth on this Christmas day. We have reached the end of our Christmas special. Thank you for allowing us to come into your home to celebrate our Lord's birth. For more information on the Roman Catholic Diocese of Charleston and what we do, please visit us at www.stcatholic.org. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year.